Welcome. As you can probably see, this is a 3D printer. Specifically, this is an Ender 3 version 2. Um, if you've not used a 3D printer before, if you want to print to it, it's not a case of like your old printer or your regular printer home, your desktop, you just press Control P. Those powers don't work here. But to get jobs to this printer, you've got to design the file or download it off the internet, put it into a slicer, which converts it to language the printer can understand and then either plug a USB cable in the front of the machine or put it on an SD card and clip that into the front of the machine. The problem with that is if the cable comes out you've lost your job and if the card reader breaks or the card's crept out you've also lost your job and the card reader sits on, on the main board on this printer anyway so once it's broken it's broken for good. So in this video I'm going to see if it's possible to Wi-Fi a 3D printer. So here's where all the magic happens on this printer. It's got the whole control board here which feeds all the data off to all the motors and on the front we've got the USB plug and the SD card reader. So these are hard mounted onto the control board so if they were to fail or break or die um, you either have to get them fixed or replace the control board altogether. So what we're trying to do is avoid any mechanical connection so if the plug comes out or the card reader dies doesn't matter because we're firing data down to Wi-Fi. So we need to figure out a way to communicate with this printer to a, a microcontroller we just can sort of tidily put inside the box so it's quite seamless. Because we know it's got USB serial at the front, there must be serial uh, going through the machine somewhere. And what's probably happening is there's a chip in there which um, converts the regular serial coming out of the CPU into stuff the USB can understand. Now the problem with USB is it's quite complicated to implement on a little controller. In fact you probably need quite a big controller to uh, act as a host to communicate with all the serial communications that's coming through the serial, if through the USB. It's actually pointless to stick with your computer, right? But we want to bypass that and have this little controller in there and make it look, sit inside the box look quite seamless. So to be able to do that we need to find out where the serial is coming from and where it's going to and see if we can hijack it. And to do that I need a schematic. So as with anything on the internet if you look long enough you will find what you're looking for and I found the exact schematic for this printer. So let's have a quick look at it. And if we have a look we can see these this RX and TX lines going into this chip here. And this chip here according to the, uh, to the chip number is a serial to a USB converter. So this serial lines are coming straight into this chip and then going to the USB plug up here. And if we follow them back, they certainly do just go back to the CPU. So somehow we need to try and tie into those, or we'll hijack those two lines and connect them to our microcontroller we're going to use to receive the Wi-Fi signal. And I'm going to use my usual ESP A1S to, um, to do that and uh, that needs power and I don't want to run a separate power supply and I've found in here also there's a in-circuit programming port which has a 3.3 volts which is exactly what the ESP S requires. So there's the ground and the VCC and the pick off the serial lines somehow. So next step now is to find out how we connect to those serial lines where there's going to be any lines on the tracks so we can just solder onto. So that's the next challenge. Okay, so I've um, wired up this to the chip. Um, I'm not sure if it comes out there. I'll do a photo later on. But I've, um, the only place I could connect the wires was directly onto the, the chip we were working with to start with. So that's all um, wired up. And of course, for the power, this is where the ICP or in circuit program is. So this hooked up for the power. So I've got my serial connections and my power connections and what I'm going to do now is hook up my controller and see if I can get it to talk. So I got the printer hooked up to my ESP01 here. Um, I've flashed some firmware on here so it will receive the serial data. Um, I've got the power from the printer, the ground, the TX from the printer goes to the RX of the controller and uh, obviously RX goes the other way around and we just need to short the enable pin 
to power to make sure the chip turns on. It's all labeled underneath, but of course, if you check my website, there'll be a far more detailed explanation of how I hooked it up. Let's try and see if it's talking. So I've got the control hooked up to the printer there, and I've got a version of Octoprint running on my network, so we'll see if we can connect to the printer without any wires. And we choose uh, COM port, so a bit of smoke and mirrors here, check the website. You create a virtual COM port with some extra software, which I'll share with a link in the description. And you pretty much tell the software that when I'm looking at COM5, actually look at this IP address and this port number. I've already configured that, so it's gonna work, hopefully. And the board rate is just the standard end of board rate. And we'll just go into our terminal and click on connect. And it's, Connected. Right, so if I go to my control and click on my home button, um, at home is the X and the Y. And it's homing the Z. So we've Established communication. Next thing to do is to try print. So I'll fire down a benchy and we'll, we'll see what comes out. So here's the completed print from the ESP. <coughs> 622 and it's not great at all. Here's a photo. Uh, it's pretty clear that it's stopped during the print, waiting for data to come in, or it's it's lagging or whatever. And it's it's made. I mean, it's finished. It printed it, but it's just it's a shambles really. So I'm thinking um, Yates, um, that controller's not got the guts to pull off the job. So we'll go for upgrades, and we'll try an ESP. 32 and see if we get a better result. Okay, so here's the ESP32 version of the print. It looks sort of pretty much acceptable. It's got a couple of weird things on there, which you would only expect if the um, buffer had run out on the printer. Um, but it's, yeah, it's light years ahead of what the A266 was doing. Um, would I use it for things I print and sell? Probably not. Um, needs a little bit of work perhaps to make it a bit more reliable i'm not going to try and run a business for sure but from what i want to print it's probably going to be fine so i can just leave the printer out here in the shed and print directly using wi-fi from my um, computer in the house so essentially what's happening is from the octo print server it's streaming data to the printer and if there's any pauses in there the printhead will stop pause and then continue again and depending on how busy your network is that could be good or bad I pretty much live in the middle of a paddock so the interference I get is the interference I create myself but if um, for example Google wants my private information all of a sudden and the network is going to send that information out pause and then continue with the print which is could cause the slightest amount of delay, and of course with the printer, it's just thinking, oh, I've got no data, I'll just stop here until something happens. <clears throat> so it's it's fine. I mean, with a bit of work, it could probably be perfect. I'll probably leave it on for now, uh, because it's, it's just more convenient for me, really, just to have it with a Wi-Fi connection. It's, it's certainly, for me, in this situation, um, usable. So you're probably wondering, well, what firmware do I have on the controller to make all this work? And it's a project called ESP3D. And we'll just have a quick uh, look at that now. So here's the project's GitHub page, which I will share in the show notes, obviously. But essentially it's this firmware you can write to 8266 or uh, ESP32. The process to write the firmware isn't straightforward. So by means, if you want a video on how to do that, let me know and I will create one. But um, you can flash it with your Arduino software. It's just, there's a few gotchas involved. 
I've just used it for the um, the port that opens up for streaming the serial data but it's sort of a kind of a fully fledged UI for your printer um, so and this is what it looks like I'm by no means an expert on it I just was searching around for a solution for opening a port up to send the serial data directly to the printer and this just happens to have this UI as well and it uh, reads the SD card files and for some reason for mine it only shows first half a dozen letters or so it's probably something I've done wrong I'm not sure you can send files <coughs> directly to the printer um, to the SD card of the printer but it uses you out so it's extremely slow so you really don't want to do it but if you're like in a production situation and you only print the same 20 files you can store them to the disk and it will um, you can pick them off and send them to the printer you won't have the issue of it timing out or anything like that because obviously it's printing directly from the SD card to the printer as it was originally designed <coughs> to do you've got um, extrusions and temperatures and, and homing on here as well if you do the old manual and bed, bed leveling so like I say I haven't fully investigated the UI itself because I just wanted to see if I get it streaming properly and it seems okay okay in this particular environment so it needs a little bit more tweaking involved maybe to make it 100% reliable um, I would like to be able to stream to like a, a big buffer in the controller and that just dishes the data out and just fills up with its own um, sort of capacity but I'm not you know add on to what the program is I think like that but you know in the future maybe but for now uh, for me it seems it seems okay um, I'll just do a bit more investigation in a few next couple of weeks just to see if I can get things to run a bit more smoother it's 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 fine it's, I've only just got the odd one a dot also on this print so it's probably acceptable particularly for the stuff I print it's just for me so it's not a biggie but um, aside from that thanks for watching